You need to understand government, you need to understand politics, you need to know all of the players. But I think most importantly, you need to have a strategy. You need to be nimble enough to constantly be changing that plan. If there's an opportunity that comes up, you want to jump on it. That's what really makes a good lobbyist. My father uh, was a Holocaust survivor. My name is Rabbi Moshe Kassir. For 50 years, he taught kids the same age that he was when he was liberated. I was separated from my whole family. After so much suffering and pain that he had seen, it's made a very lifelong impression on me. I wanted to be in a situation where I could protect my family. That really began my interest in politics and understanding government and figuring out um, how, to ch how to make a change and uh, you know, how to influence um, those people that were in a position of authority. Midtown needed a facelift, as a lot of people were thinking, were moving downtown or now potentially moving to Hudson Yards. It was really important to give Midtown uh, a shot in the arm. It's East Midtown and the Bloomberg administration wants to change it. To rezone and redevelop a huge section of Manhattan called East Midtown. It contains some of the city's most famous buildings, including the Chrysler Building and Grand Central Terminal. We worked on it from the very beginning. Mayor Bloomberg was at the end of his term. Chris Quinn was the end of her term. Bill de Blasio was going to be the next mayor and really kind of realized very early on that the politics weren't going to come together. We came up with the idea of having the Vanderbilt Corridor, which would be a precursor to the larger East Midtown rezoning, which would be a smaller area and would give the city some very significant benefits, namely $220 million of transit improvements. It was bringing together a lot of different stakeholders to make that happen. The Cornell Tech project was very, very challenging. We went in with a $2 billion project and 2 million square feet, ultimately into a sort of small community, you know, Roosevelt Island, that did not want development. You know, we kind of came into a situation where we won this RFP, $100 million in city land, and there were five sites. Pretty much everyone, I'm told, said that they would build on Roosevelt Island, but no one had actually talked to the Roosevelt Island community. You know, we really needed to demonstrate that, like, we were going to be the hardest working people in town. When Mayor Bloomberg announced it, he said something like, these guys did their homework, they did their outreach, they left no stone unturned, they made sure everybody supported them. And I felt like that was really very much a validation for my own philosophy and my own belief in how to do this kind of work. At the end, we worked really, really hard on the ground to build a tremendous amount of support in the community. A few days before the opening, we had a community event with a thousand people. Oh, it was so exciting. I'm not just looking to pick up clients so that our numbers are bigger. We want to make sure that the clients that we're representing are people who are doing something that's good for New York, that are on message with where local communities, elected officials, and people's thinking are, to watch companies change and grow. Um, and you know, do different things and to be part of that is really exciting.